Amongst all the bad news of the last few weeks, this last few days has seen some bits of good news, and perhaps not least one that I discovered last night to find that we're going to have three short episodes of The Vicar of Dibley this Christmas, uh, which I shall very much look forward to. And uh, apparently one of them's going to show our vicar, Geraldine, struggling with presenting sermons via Zoom. Well, this isn't Zoom, but I do share her uh, reservations about the medium. It isn't easy to uh, read notes and speak into a camera at the same time. Today is Stir Up Sunday, at the end of the calendar year for the church. And Stir Up Sunday, of course, is thus called because of the prayer book collect. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded. But of course it's Stir Up Sunday because traditionally it's the day on which folks who are making Christmas puddings uh, do all of the stirring and mixing so that they have time to mature before the big day. Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 24 and is all about signs of the end of the age. Signs, yes, but Jesus warns us that no one knows when the end will come. And he says it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came. And if you look back to this time last year, we had no idea what was going to hit us during 2020. No idea that our life was going to be knocked about and changed so radically by COVID-19. Today's themes are about the problems that we will face in our lives and that creation will face until the ultimate end of the age. And I've been a bit surprised that there haven't been those who would want to suggest that uh, COVID itself is one of those things that we might uh, expect or be warned about. Indeed, I've been a little surprised that there's been nobody wanting to stick their necks out and even talk about the judgment of God. Because actually one of the themes for today's readings is that of judgment. But as I say, I'm surprised, I would have been surprised if somebody had made that suggestion. I wouldn't have been uh, in sympathy. But nonetheless, this whole situation must have caused us all to ask ourselves, where is God in all of this? Some of the ways in which we express our thoughts and our understanding of God, one of those ways is in the songs that we sing, the hymns that we sing in our worship. And I was reminded as I thought about this uh, whole situation of two hymns and songs. One, a song which I learnt way back in the 60s, I think it was actually written in 1958, uh, which says, I do not know what lies ahead the way I cannot tell. It will be familiar to some of those of you who are of my age and vintage. And the chorus says this, I know who holds the future and he'll guide me with his hand. With God things don't just happen, everything by him is planned. So as I face tomorrow with its problems large and small, I'll trust the God of miracles, give to him my all. Well, that refrain contains a lot of things that I would be so very ready to go along with and subscribe to. But I do hesitate at the phrase, with God things don't just happen, everything by him is planned. Because if that was the case, and I think I mentioned this last time I made one of these videos back in July, if that was the case, we would have to come to the conclusion that God was prepared to, if not actually, bring about the COVID-19 uh, infection. Uh, if he wasn't actually creating it, he would actively allow it to happen as part of his plan. 
that's what you have to conclude if you take the view that God controls all things and exercises his power all of the time. And I said that I came to the conclusion that God was rather loving and just and kind and concerned for us, but he chose not to exercise his power, allows his power to be limited. Now, I don't want to talk at length about that again today, but I hope you'll understand what I'm trying to say. For me, God is loving, he's interested, he's concerned, but he has allowed humankind free will. So rather than singing, I do not know what lies ahead, I'd rather sing another hymn, which is that one, that famous hymn of the Welsh folks, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Guide me, O thy great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. And I find that a very reassuring thing to sing in these times. And then comes the refrain, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore, feed me now and evermore. A God who is my redeemer, who will support me in my pilgrimage of life, who will hold me with his powerful hand and who will nurture me and feed me now and forevermore. Why does this matter? Why am I talking about this need to understand where God is in this whole situation. Well, it matters because we're told in the New Testament that we're to be always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give a reason for the hope that we have within us. Words from 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're exhorted to do this with gentleness and respect, to always be prepared, always be ready, always be able to give an explanation for our faith. So if I have to give an explanation, I look to words like those from Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Now today is not just Stir Up Sunday and about Christmas Pud, it's about something else as well. And if this had been live, I wanted to pose a question to you and ask for a response. Unfortunately, I won't be able to discern what your responses are as I ask, can you tell me what it is that Elvis Presley, Anton Dubeck and Harry Redknapp have in common? Well, I won't wait for two or three minutes to hear the replies. But what they have in common is that they've all been given a kingly title. Elvis described as the king of rock and roll, Anton Dubeck as the king of ballroom, and in 2018, Harry Redknapp was crowned king of the jungle in that I'm a Celebrity programme. Now, note for all three of them that they're not like Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho, the special one, is called that because he said that's what he was. I'm the special one. I don't think that Elvis or Anton or Harry have sought to call themselves king of whatever, but they have been afforded that title by people like you and me. In Matthew chapter 27, in verse 11, when Jesus is brought before Pilate, Pilate says to him directly, are you the king of the Jews? And the reply is somewhat whimsical. Some translations make it more definite from Jesus than others. The King James Version simply says that Jesus replied, Thou sayest. Other versions say, he said, So you say, or you say so. It's almost as though he might have been saying, Well, what do you think? What do you make of me? Stir Up Sunday is also the festival of Christ the King in the church's calendar. And it's a fairly new Christian festival. Uh, it was actually brought in by the Roman Catholic Church under Pope Pius XI in 1925. But as a, a notion of a time of celebration, it's now established in the annual calendar of the church, not least in the calendar of the Church of England. And 
the festival of Christ the King comes on the last Sunday of the church's annual calendar, the, the Sunday immediately before Advent. So next week, Advent Sunday, we start the cycle once more. And so to go with this uh, title and festival of Christ the King, today's reading was from Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 15 to 23. And in particular, these words where it says, He raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. So we celebrate Christ who is the king of a kingdom, the kingdom of God. Christ the king. But when we think of kingship, we tend to think of power of wealth, of status, of someone who is served by others. But Jesus operated a very different kind of kingship. He was a different kind of king. There's a very well-known poem or reading which was constructed in the early part of the 20th century, uh, but says something about the kind of person that Jesus was, the kind of king, indeed, that Jesus was. Here is a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. Then for three years he was an itinerant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. He never travelled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed upon a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth, his coat. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty long centuries have come and gone, and today he remains a central figure for the humankind. I am far within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that were ever built, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as has that one solitary life. Jesus, the king, but a king who exercised a different kind of power. Perhaps in some ways we can look at our own queen and get something of an insight into how we should understand Jesus. Her Majesty the Queen and her example are examples of his kingship in many ways. She has power, she has wealth, she has status, but she chooses not to exercise power. She does not seem to want to live lavishly and she has committed her whole life to service. This year we have hardly seen her, but she is there. She remains our head of state. She cares about and serves her subject after the example of her declared Lord and Saviour. So we too trust in Jesus the King. We may not see him, but he is there. He remains our Lord. He cares about us and intercedes for us. In conclusion, while there is much uncertainty, we can see the candle of hope and we must do all that we can to nurture its flame. Not my words in constructing a sermon, but words from the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. Next Sunday, Advent Sunday, begins the lead up to Christmas and the press and media saying, what kind of Christmas are we going to be allowed to have? Will we still be in lockdown? Well, surely we can say we shall have Christmas as we have always had Christmas, because the main point of it for us 
is to celebrate the coming into the world of the light of the world, to celebrate the light shining in the darkness. We know the one who brings hope. There are strong signs that the oppression of this awful and powerful COVID-19 will get pushed back. Just this week we've heard more news of the hope of a vaccine. So there are reasons to nurture the candlelight of hope. For us at Crossways, there are so many signs of hope, things to bring us cheer. Who would have believed, even if there hadn't been such a strange year as 2020, that by the end of 2020, we would have established in our building a new boiler and be well on the way to seeing the replacement of the roof completed. So that in 2021, we look forward to meeting in a, a warmer, drier building where we can worship together and where we can sing together our praises. Sing together. That's one of the things that we have missed so much, isn't it? Words that we can sing like these with which I end my uh, chat to you today. A hymn. Jesus is King and I will extol him. Give him the glory and honour his name. He reigns on high, enthroned in the heavens, word of the Father, exalted for us. We have a hope that is steadfast and certain, gone through the curtain and touching the throne. We have a priest who is there interceding, pouring his grace on our lives day by day. We come to him, our priest and apostle, clothed in his glory and bearing his name laying our lives with gladness before him, filled with his spirit, we worship the King. O Holy One, our hearts do adore you. Thrilled with your goodness, we give you our praise. Angels in light with worship surround him. Jesus, our Saviour, forever the same. Amen.